three keys to not getting injured. Three keys to avoiding injury, not get debilitating, sprains, tweaks, breaks, scrapes, etc., etc. If you used your body, this is for you. If you're an athlete, competitive athlete, this is for you. Even if you think, I'm not sure if this is for me, this is for you because you use your body. If you're healthy, you don't want to be laid out with a back injury or something like that. That can really be a game changer that can slide you towards being unhealthy or you'd be, you'd be held back, prevented from doing your work. Or if you're already unhealthy, well, wait till you can't use your body at all. So welcome in. Much love, Trav here. Here's a pick from Mount Kala. We talk about this a lot, but it was a really cool hike did uh, last weekend. And today I want to share and get into depth on how to prevent injury. A lot of this I have learned from studying bio, human biomechanics, body mechanics, from studying and from studying physics in combination. Uh, I want to shout out especially my buddy Kyle from Driveline Baseball for making me think about a lot of this stuff and teaching me a whole lot. And uh, a lot of this is also learned from experience. Unfortunately, the experience of suffering a lot of injuries, sprains, twists, and breaks, and tears. Uh, earlier in my life, I did a lot of sports growing up. I still do a lot of sports, a lot of different kinds of sports, lots of different movements, so experienced a variety of different sort of injuries, but have been able to crack the code a lot years back, stop getting injured, and my athletic performance has skyrocketed since allowing me to do a lot of cool things and feel pretty good about myself too and stay healthy and accomplish more and continue adding gains on everything I'm doing instead of having to stop to re-nurse for injury. So let's talk about three keys to preventing injury and not getting injured. The number one thing, the key that I am going to share with you is to listen to your body and trust when something is painful that you shouldn't be doing it. This is something that I didn't learn for a while. I, I thought as a man that I was supposed to push through pain and that I was supposed to, I didn't need to take off seasons to rest and recharge. Um, and this is partially true. You have muscle soreness, okay, you can keep going. But if you've got bone soreness from a movement, you keep going, you can develop a stress fracture, cause you a lot of problems, right? You think uh, muscle soreness from doing pull-ups every day, is, is something you can work through, sure, but if it's joint problems, you keep going, you're going to tear a tendon, you're going to tear a ligament, you're going to be either looking at surgery or uh, being held back for some a long time or both. So pretty simply, if stuff hurts from a movement, then you should listen to your body and stop because injuries happen a lot from either trying to do too much, too much weight, oh, my body's screaming at me, stop, uh, or trying to do the same thing. Uh, too often repetitive use injury, doing the same thing over and over. A lot of athletes have this problem, and you try to do that, eventually uh, something's going to, to pop and break. So if it hurts, then you, sh you don't have to lay off your body entirely, but go ahead and do a different exercise. You know, your elbow hurts from pull-ups, uh, maybe you should be doing overhead press or whatever. So uh, we'll get into more of that later when we discuss body awareness, but you should be doing different exercises, this will, pre this will prevent a lot of these repetitive use injuries that are pretty common. Okay, number one, listen to your body. Number two, know your environment. Okay, so a lot of injuries happen from uh, interfacing poorly with the environment. For instance, basketball, you jump, you land on someone's ankle, you sprain a uh, foot, you sprain your ankle. You bang your head on a low-hanging door frame. You uh, trip over something. You try to lean on a tree and the tree snaps and breaks and you fall. You slip off an edge. Stuff like this, you need to know your environment. You need to know uh, how to be safe in your environment. So number one key to that is before you go and move through environment, take stock of it. This is where uh, you look around. This is where the things are. This is how much space is between things. Um, and that will go a long way. Um, another important part of this is you need to be uh, tr your training should be based on environment, not just moving through flat open field, but for instance, picking up objects, moving objects, moving through objects, uh, working around things, stepping up over things, etc., etc. This will get you prepared for how to land safely and stuff like that, 
or realizing that, wow, this is crowded, there's no way to land, I'm not going to jump at all, right? Or some of these trees are broken, I'm going to make sure to look at all of them carefully, make sure they're not dead before I put my weight on them, right? This sort of thing. If you're more aware of your environment, you're going to decrease a lot of injury and death as well, because unfortunately, uh, of these injuries that lead to death, uh, n not interfacing well with the environment is a common one. Like you try to climb up the rope and the rope snaps, well, maybe you should have uh, relied more on the rock or the rock fucking crumbles, this sort of a thing. Um, so be aware of your environment, train with your environment in mind. Okay. So part of interfacing with an environment is your body interfacing with that environment. So body awareness is a big, big thing as well. Uh, one of the main ways that the body get injured is just moving badly, putting too much pressure on the knee, putting tweaking the back or turning more than the back can turn, uh, trying to lift too much weight, stuff like that, where sometimes you have no warning from your body, uh, all of a sudden you're just injured because you didn't have enough body awareness, right? So you need to know the dimensions of your body, you need to know the length, you need to know the, the, the limitations in, t in terms of twisting and turning, flexibility, stuff like that, the plateaus or limitations depending how you look at it, how much weight you can lift, in which directions, and so on and so on. And uh, your training for this needs to be more than just aesthetics and more than just training for competition. It needs to be training to interface and interact with an environment, right? So your training, not only should it be uh, with objects and obstacles, going through obstacle courses and stuff like that, but you should also, uh, you, sh you should be training in such a way that you're really learning your body what it can do, what it can't do, how to put it in the best position, and trying to expand your movement vocabulary. Uh, movement vocabulary, you have a lot of words, you should have a lot of movements as well, different moves you can make, things you can do. And part of that is uh, training different sports, studying different movements, and for your exercise, not doing the exact thing, same thing every day, but trying out different stuff. So you do that, you will develop body awareness. You apply that, your, these biomechanics, personal biomechanics, with uh, uh, the physical environment interfacing, with physical environment, understand, have a rudimentary understanding of Newtonian physics if possible, just knowing how gravity works and stuff like that, and combine it with just listening to your body and stopping when things become painful, and you will uh, reduce most injury. Um, you'll have less. Uh, you, you'll have less collision injury. You'll have less arthritis, or less soreness, uh, and stuff like that. So very important. Hope you find this helpful. Hope you find it useful. Again, it's for everyone. So share it with anyone who you think would find it useful. Leave a comment what you think of how you're training right now to prevent injury, if at all. If not, you should be. It's something you should think about. Um, if not, uh, yeah, and I could go into more detail. Like, you watch my stairs, my TEDx talk on stairs. It will tell you a lot about how I think about this. Uh, and it will tell you a lot about how you can think about this, of, of interacting with the environment and so on. And also, I've got a video, a related video to this, running down this mountain backwards, explaining why that makes sense. So you should check that out too. Those of you who need help with your training or want help with your training, want to join the training group, we have that. It's called Game Shape. Go, you can go ahead and apply down below, and uh, we will talk. So hope you find that useful, and I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Much love, peace, and go ahead and leave that comment down below. Take care.